Let's mix it in here. I don't know if you can hear. We have guineas right outside the window, so not really conducive to filming this. I apologize if you can hear that. Hi, and welcome back everyone. We are now at the 10th Sunday dinner. We've come back around and we're into double digits again. Here's what we're having for dinner today. We're starting with a winter fruit cup. Then for our main dish, we're having pan broiled steak with oyster sauce. On the side of that, we'll have creamed potatoes, spinach, finger rolls and butter, then also for our salad course, we'll have salted peanuts, apple celery salad, and olives. And then for dessert, we're having pineapple delight and as always, coffee. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. My name is Ashley. I'm a registered dietitian and I love everything vintage. Those two big loves in my life are coming together to bring you this. This is the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about what we're doing here, you can refer back to week one where I give a more thorough explanation about everything going on in this project. And with that being said, let's hop into the kitchen and let's get this dinner going. When other recipes have called for mayonnaise, we've been experimenting with some different mayonnaise recipes that you guys have sent me. And this time there actually is a mayonnaise recipe. I've also been doing it with an immersion blender and it seems to be very effective. However, several of you have asked if I would do it maybe the old fashioned way. And so since this specifies exactly how we're supposed to do it, we're gonna go ahead and do it as it calls for the, the 1924 way and let's see how it turns out. Well, by golly, my friends, I think we've done it. I don't foresee myself eating very much of this salad. Maybe I'm wrong. However, I think I'm going to cut it at least in half, maybe in a quarter and just do like a quarter cup of celery and one apple. That way I'm not wasting it. Maybe if it's good, maybe I'll do a little bit more afterward so I can send it to neighbors and friends and see what they think. But for now, as we make it, we're just gonna do like a quarter cup of celery and one apple. I'm putting together the apple celery salad tonight, the night before, so I guess we are going to get this mayonnaise together. So we're putting our apple cider vinegar in here. It's definitely more thin than it was before, but it's still thick enough. You know, I've taste tested the rest of them before, so let's go ahead and give this one a taste test before I mix it up there. It smells good. I smell the apple cider vinegar more than anything else. Ooh, it's very thin. Hmm. Oop. Nope. I liked the initial taste right at first. It tasted just like mostly like vinegar. I liked that flavor, but give it a second or two to kick in and it tastes like egg yolk afterward. And I like egg yolk. When I do my eggs, I like a poached egg or an over easy so that the yolk is very runny, but I just don't think I like it in this. So now I kind of wish I hadn't tasted it ahead of time because I think it's going to really, when I try this tomorrow, when I try the salad tomorrow, it's going to be in my head already that I don't like this mayonnaise. So uh, it'll be okay. It's going to be okay. We've made these peanuts before. Uh, I think it was pretty early on, and I know I had trouble finding raw peanuts in the shell at first, but luckily we have a grocery store, just a little uh, like small town, family owned grocery store, I think, and they have a barrel full of these peanuts. So I was able to find them much more easily this time. 
But I remember them being good the last time, I think. I think they tasted good, but uh, hopefully they still taste just as good this time. For the finger rolls, we'll be using regular flour this time. I have somebody that's going to try the food. They'll be off camera, but they will be kind of helping and trying the food a little bit. And I'll be giving the rest of these away to some friends and neighbors. So uh, I can't give you my opinion on how these are going to turn out flavor wise, but I can tell you, I suppose, what they look like. Let's get this flour kneaded in with our wooden spoon. give it three hours of rising and we'll see how big it grows. Let's see how much it's risen. Yeah, it looks like it rose pretty nicely. It smells good, I can smell the yeast in there. Let's get it kneaded out. I'm definitely going to need a good bit more flour here. It's very sticky. Alright, egg size pieces might be a little bigger than an egg, we'll see. I'm not sure what the usual shape is, but we're going with this. Eh, close enough for me. I started putting them in here, and I just don't think that that's going to fit, so we'll put it in this instead. Check these again in about an hour, see if they have doubled up in size. This looks close enough to doubled, I think. Just brush the wash over top and we'll get these in the oven. When I bought this banana for the recipe, it was firm. Now it's a little brown. I like my bananas on the more brown side, but I know some people really don't. Either way, it'll make this a little bit sweeter. I'm cutting this recipe in half. I'm not used to cutting bananas into little squares. Usually if I cut them, it's just in slices. So this is different also very slimy. I should probably not be doing this in a stack, so if you're watching for inspiration, do not attempt this at home. This is why, Lottie, I failed my knife skills test. All right. There we go. Do our apple next. Just smells so good. Love these adorable little pieces. Half a 
teaspoon just seems, I'm cutting this in half, just, it seems so little. Feels like it definitely won't be enough. What do I know though? Mm, that smells delicious. This pineapple delight reminds me of like a tiramisu a little bit. If we had a fruity tiramisu, I just wish that we had the whipped cream layers or whipped cream in between. I think that would kick it up a notch a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna go with what we've got, go with the recipe. And I know you guys let me know that these lady fingers are different than the softer cakier lady fingers. And so I assume these probably are not the right ones to use because it says to split them. They're probably the softer cakier ones, but this is what we have and this is what we're using. potatoes again. I broke out the red polka dotted bowl so you could see it. As I've been teasing it for the last several uh, weeks I think in the comments talking about it. There's a little basket I'm just setting right down in here and we'll steam it. We'll see how that cooks up. The spinach that I found hanging out everywhere, all the grocery stores I was in, is all just the baby spinach leaves. It's not the big, thick, heavy spinach. So we're definitely not gonna need to cook this quite as long. We'll just cook it down. And I almost don't know if we need to put it in the water, but we're going to. It's amazing to me how little spinach is left like after you have cooked it and then drained it of water wants us to chop with a seasoning of butter and pepper. So I guess just chop the seasonings into them. I have no idea if I was recording that last part, but um, we did some gluten-free flour and butter and milk. And I think it is thick Plenty thick enough. We don't need to add anything else to thicken this. This is just fine. I think we probably have about five times the amount of sauce that we need, so that's okay. I do believe next week's menu calls for creamed peas, and I'm actually going to be filming that in like two days, so I'll just reuse it, the leftovers of this for that as long as the recipes are the same. There you go, kind of cute. 
Thank you to the grocery store that's about an hour from my house. You saved me an extra hour. Otherwise, I would have had to go like two, two and a half hours to Pittsburgh to find this. But we do have some fresh oysters or fresh enough in here. And I have to say, I am a little hesitant, skeptical, whatever you want to call it, to put this oyster sauce on this steak because look at how beautiful this steak is. This porterhouse is just, oh, she's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know how I feel about oysters and oyster sauce. And if I don't like it and I have tainted this perfection of beef right here, I, I would be very sad. And if it's terrible, it's terrible. And I guess we'll just have to go back and visit my new best friend, Scott, at Clarion Farms Beef and get ourselves another one of these and just eat it plain without oyster sauce on it so that we can redeem it. But I'm going to keep my mind open. I know it doesn't sound like that. I am after I just said all that, but I'm gonna try and keep my mind open. Maybe it'll be delicious. This will be a little surf and turf. It'll be very yummy, I hope. Let's find out. All right, they don't smell too bad. I don't know what just, it's a little piece of dried oyster liquor. Ugh, right there. They feel kind of cool. They're nice and soft. Very slippery. Uh, I don't think there's quite enough of this to bring it to a boil for very long or it's going to evaporate. These do already seem pretty plump though. So I don't think we'll have to cook them that long to keep them plump. Ah! To keep them too plump. All right, we are starting to boil in here. Woo! I'm sure this is delicious, but I will say that to me does not look appetizing. It's gonna be though, it's gonna be really great. I don't know about turning this back and forth rapidly. I know we're supposed to follow, but do I really want to do that to this steak? I don't know. Oh. There's the crust. This breaks my heart. Oh. We have put the finishing touches on our oyster sauce steak and it's ready to try everything. 
We're starting off this time with a winter fruit salad, which is I, always surprising to me when we start off with fruit. I'm used to the soup at this point starting off with, and in my regular life, I'm used to starting off with a salad whenever we have formal dinners. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy starting off with the fruit. So let's get right into this. Surprisingly, the the least amount of fruit in here is the banana, but it's the thing I smell the most out of this. Mm. That's really good. There is just the right amount of tartness, I think, with that lemon. Adding the powdered sugar obviously is going to sweeten it up quite a bit, but adding that half a teaspoon of lemon in there really balances that out nicely. And I would eat this for dessert if, actually, maybe I will eat this for dessert because I can't have our pineapple delight dessert, so maybe I'll have just the rest of this for the dessert. But yeah, this is quite delicious. My off-screen help felt the same way about the fruit salad. They said they really like the blend of flavors together. They meshed well very nicely and they felt you could have that as a dessert. You could have it as a starter. Really, it kind of fit in at any point in the day. I bet you could even have it as a snack. Um, and now we are here at the main portion. Now, normally I like my steak rare. My off-camera help likes there's a little more medium, closer to medium, medium rare. So this is cooked about a medium um, and we're gonna get straight into it first I'll try it without the oyster on top just the sauce and then we'll try it with the oyster you know I thought I would smell the oyster more but I guess the when I've smelled oysters before when I smelled it this time it doesn't smell very strong it actually has kind of a sweet smell to me which those of you who are familiar with oysters are probably like, yeah, duh, that's what oysters smell like. But I'm not that familiar with them, so it was a little surprising to me. But let's try this. The texture of that meat is phenomenal. It has an excellent chew, an excellent mouthfeel. Oh, it's good. That's a good steak. And I feel like I've tasted a little bit of the oyster sauce in there, but not a lot. Let's, let's try it. I've got the oyster on top here. Now well, let's give it a try. You know what? That's not too bad. I don't think I would ever choose to pair the oysters with beef again. And actually, I don't know that I would ever, I know oysters are supposed to be very desirable and people love them and they're very fancy. I just don't think I get the hype for them. They're just fine to me and maybe I'm not cooking them correctly. Maybe they need something else. Maybe I would like them if, I don't know, somebody else prepared them for me. They're just okay. They kind of taste like nothing to me with a little bit, mostly nothing with a little bit of something that isn't that great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I tried it so that I know what it tastes like. But moving forward, I much prefer my beef just as beef. My off camera help felt that the steak was delicious. They really loved the texture of it. It, it was just on point. They tried the oysters on their own. Didn't really love them on their own, but actually really liked the combination, the oyster on top of the steak. They really enjoyed that. They, the mashed potatoes, potatoes are one of their favorite things. And so you really can't go wrong with the mashed potatoes, loved them. They felt that the spinach, just the texture was a little too much for them. It was a little slimier than they were expecting and they like spinach for the most part, but they weren't impressed with this. And I did have them try the finger rolls as well. And let me tell you, uh, they loved them and they, they were smelling them. They said they smelled really, really great. And I even offered them butter for them and they said, these don't even really need butter. They're good enough without the butter to eat. So 
Uh, is there a better compliment than that? I, I don't know if there is. So it looks at this point like uh, I think this whole project has been a success. We're not going to stop. We're still going to do the next like 20 some odd recipes or menus. But I think at this point, after that win of a pie crust a couple weeks ago with Chef Scarlet, the win of these, I mean, yeah, I think we have been pretty successful so far. Let's try. I haven't tried the mashed potatoes or the spinach yet, so let's give them a try. The potatoes smell very good. And just like every other mashed potato recipe we've had so far, this tastes very good. Uh, it's nice and thick, creamy, like a, a pretty standard yummy mashed potato. Let's try it. I like the idea of the egg on the spinach. And really, if you think about it, we are kind of having a steak and eggs as a breakfast dish to me. So we could be eating this whole thing for breakfast. I smell the eggs over the spinach here. Normally I would expect to smell the spinach more, but I do smell the eggs over the spinach. I actually, with that much of the egg in there, I couldn't even feel the spinach. So I'm guessing it is pretty soft and probably slippery enough that when I'm eating it, I don't even notice it. So let's try it without the egg. I would disagree with their assessment on opinions of texture. I think that's a great texture. It seems to me to be very light and uh, very easy. It doesn't, it may be a little bit slimy for me, but not terribly, not what you expect for cooked spinach. I think this is lovely. Right. Our salad course, we have the apple celery salad with the homemade mayo. And we've tried the mayo already, so you know how I feel about that. All I smell is the mayo on this. I don't really smell the celery or apples very strong, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna say for me, this is just not a winning combination. Uh, my off-screen help loves mayonnaise. They sometimes eat it by the spoonful on occasion, which is repulsive to me. However, <laughs> They, when they tasted this, they said, uh, what is this sauce on here? And I explained that it was a homemade mayonnaise and they said, mm, I'm just going to say this isn't my favorite salad option that I've tasted before. So, um, <clears throat> maybe it would be delicious for some other people. For me, I think I could probably go for something maybe a little more lemony, but, uh, that's okay. We're gonna try our salted peanuts next. And we made these once before. I forget which menu that was for. So I know that we liked them then. Let's try it again. And they're good. They taste like a salted peanut that we roasted. You can't really go wrong. If we had not put the mayonnaise on there, it was just the apples and the celery, and we threw in a few of these chopped up roasted salted peanuts. I bet those would go really well together. Hmm. Let's try it, actually. Even with the mayo, I'll try it out. No. <laughs> it helps it out a little bit, but it's still a no. All right, let's cut into this thing. We'll see how it does. I have a feeling it's gonna be a little harder to cut into than maybe it's supposed to be, just because as we had discussed, I think this should have been the cake-like lady fingers, but Definitely not coming out as pretty as what I wanted it to. Get under there. Get under there. Oh boy. Now it's just becoming a pile that's falling apart. We have our pretty whipped cream we'll put on top.
there you have it. Again, not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but let's find out. We're gonna have our off-camera help try it and they'll let us know what they think. The off-camera help's opinion on the dessert was that each of the individual flavors were really good. They enjoyed the pineapple, the cherry, the lady fingers. However, they didn't seem to blend well together. And it, it may have been uh, the mistake on my part for using the wrong type of lady fingers because they said the lady fingers that had the cherry juice that was soaked into them a little more and the lady, they were softer. The flavor and texture was absorbed into them. Those were more pleasant and seemed to blend a little bit better than the areas in which they hadn't been absorbed there. They felt that if we did use those lady fingers, maybe we shouldn't have drained the pineapple juice. Or if we did drain the pineapple juice, maybe we should have poured a little bit of it over top along with the cherry juice to help those lady fingers absorb it a little bit better. So this menu overall, I enjoyed and was surprised by the amount of fruit throughout where last week I was kind of lamenting on there really wasn't much fruit in the last menu. This one, it's at the very beginning, the middle, and the end. There's a plethora of fruit throughout. Most of the recipes I think turned out very well. I think they work together very well. And if you put steak on a menu, I'm automatically going to really probably enjoy it as long as you don't overcook it. And while I didn't love the combination of the oysters and the steak, I didn't hate it. So I'd say overall for me, even though I know I didn't like the salad course either, I liked it better than last week, but it wasn't quite my favorite menu this time. So let's give it maybe a seven and a half or an eight. And uh, I think some of that is influenced and inflated by the quality of the beef that we used here. So that kind of bumped up as well. Now, nutrition wise, we, as I mentioned before, we had a ton of fruit. I liked that we started out with fruit. We had fruit in the middle and at the end. There were definitely fewer vegetables than I would like in this menu. We had our celery in the salad, although not much, and we had spinach. But other than that, we had our white potatoes. Um, there were, it really, I think, was missing some of the vegetables that I like to see throughout a meal. The steak, while there is more saturated fat in that, I still think it's an excellent source of protein. And they're going to need in this time a lot more fat probably than what we do now. We certainly need our fats, but they needed it even more than we do now as their lifestyle was much more active. Beef in 1924 was probably a good bit more nutritious maybe than what we're eating today commercially. And maybe I'm wrong on that, I'm not sure. But if you get your beef from probably a local farmer, someone who you know what's going into their beef, you know how they're treating their cows, uh, if you can trust them on that, you're probably getting a much more nutrient dense cut of meat than you would be if you're just going out and getting it commercially from the store. This meal is a, a lacking a little probably in fiber, but overall not terrible. I'd give this one maybe a, a six or a seven out of 10 for nutrients if I was judging it. And then cost, this one was somewhere in the middle compared to what we've had before. The steak was the most expensive part. Our steak was either a pound and a half or two pounds, not three pounds. So if you, I'm kind of inflating the price a little bit from what we paid compared to if we were actually making this for six people. I think if we counted for six people, we're looking at somewhere probably between 80 and $95, depending on what we could find on sale and where we are in the country. If you liked what you saw today, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss another dinner with us. Join us next week where, among everything else, we attempt a roast duck and a peach custard pie.